October 15th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Jeremiah chapters 44 through 46 of the Old Testament The Lord spoke to Jeremiah concerning all the Judeans who were living in the land of Egypt, those in Migdal, Tapanias, Memphis, and in the region of southern Egypt. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, You have seen all the disaster I brought on Jerusalem and all the towns of Judah. Indeed, they now lie in ruins and are deserted. This happened because of the wickedness the people living there did. They made me angry by worshiping and offering sacrifice to other gods, whom neither they nor you nor your ancestors previously knew. I sent my servants, the prophets, to you people, over and over again, warning you not to do this disgusting thing I hate. But the people of Jerusalem and Judah would not listen or pay any attention. They would not stop the wickedness they were doing, nor quit sacrificing to other gods. So my anger and my wrath were poured out and burned like a fire through the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. That is why they have become the desolate ruins that they are today. So now the Lord, the God who rules over all, the God of Israel, ask, Why will you do such great harm to yourselves? Why should every man, woman, child, and baby of yours be destroyed from the midst of Judah? Why should you leave yourselves without a remnant? That is what will result from your making me angry by what you are doing. You are making me angry by sacrificing to other gods here in the land of Egypt where you live. You will be destroyed for doing that. You will become an example used in curses and an object of ridicule among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten all the wicked things that have been done in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? By your ancestors, by the kings of Judah and their wives, by you and your wives? To this day, your people have shown no contrition. They have not revered me, nor followed the laws and statutes I commanded you and your ancestors. Because of this, the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I am determined to bring disaster on you, even to the point of destroying all the Judeans here. I will see to it that all the Judean remnant that was determined to go and live in the land of Egypt will be destroyed. Here in the land of Egypt they will fall in battle or perish from starvation. People of every class will die in war or from starvation. They will become an object of horror and ridicule, an example of those who have been cursed and that people use in pronouncing a curse. I will punish those who live in the land of Egypt with war, starvation, and disease, just as I punished Jerusalem. None of the Judean remnant who have come to live in the land of Egypt will escape or survive to return to the land of Judah. Though they long to return and live there, none of them shall return except a few fugitives. Then all the men who were aware that their wives were sacrificing to other gods as well as all their wives, answered Jeremiah. There was a great crowd of them representing all the people who lived in northern and southern Egypt. They answered, We will not listen to what you claim the Lord has spoken to us. Instead, we will do everything we vowed we would do. We will sacrifice and pour out drink offerings to the goddess called the Queen of Heaven, just as we and our ancestors, our kings, and our leaders previously did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food, were well off, and had no troubles. But ever since we stopped sacrificing and pouring out drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven, we have been in great need. Our people have died in wars or of starvation. The women added, We did indeed sacrifice and pour out drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. But it was with the full knowledge and approval of our husbands that we made cakes in her image and poured out drink offerings to her. Then Jeremiah replied to all the people, both men and women who responded to him in this way. The Lord did indeed remember and call to mind what you did. He remembered the sacrifices you and your ancestors, your kings, your leaders, and all the rest of the people of the land offered to other gods in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. 
Finally, the Lord can no longer endure your wicked deeds and the disgusting things you did. That is why your land has become the desolate, uninhabited ruin that it is today. That is why it has become a proverbial example used in curses. You have sacrificed to other gods. You have sinned against the Lord. You have not obeyed the Lord. You have not followed his laws, his statutes, and his decrees. That is why this disaster that is evident to this day has happened to you. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the people, particularly to all the women. Listen to what the Lord has to say, all you people of Judah who are in Egypt. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, You women have confirmed by your actions what you vowed with your lips. You said, We will certainly carry out our vows to sacrifice and pour out drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. Well, then fulfill your vows, carry them out. But listen to what the Lord has to say, all you people of Judah who are living in the land of Egypt. The Lord says, I hereby swear by my own great name that none of the people of Judah who are living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name in their oaths. Never again will any of them use it in an oath saying, As surely as the Lord God lives, I will indeed see to it that disaster, not prosperity, happens to them. All the people of Judah who are in the land of Egypt will die in war or from starvation until not one of them is left. Some who survive in battle will return to the land of Judah from the land of Egypt, but they will be very few indeed. Then the Judean remnant who have come to live in the land of Egypt will know whose words prove true, mine or theirs. Moreover, the Lord says, I will make something happen to prove that I will punish you in this place. I will do it so that you will know that my threats to bring disaster on you will prove true. I, the Lord, promise that I will hand Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, over to his enemies who are seeking to kill him. I will do that just as surely as I handed King Zedekiah of Judah over to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, his enemy who was seeking to kill him. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to Barak, son of Neriah, while he was writing down in a scroll the words that Jeremiah spoke to him. This happened in the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was ruling over Judah. The Lord God of Israel has a message for you, Barak. You have said, I feel so hopeless, for the Lord has added sorrow to my suffering. I am worn out from groaning. I can't find any rest. The Lord told Jeremiah, Tell Barak, the Lord says, I am about to tear down what I have built and to uproot what I have planted. I will do this throughout the whole earth. Are you looking for great things for yourself? Do not look for such things. For I, the Lord, affirm that I am about to bring disaster on all humanity, but I will allow you to escape with your life wherever you go. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah about the nations. He spoke about Egypt and the army of Pharaoh, Necho king of Egypt, which was encamped along the Euphrates River at Carchemish. Now this was the army that King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon defeated in the fourth year, that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was ruling over Judah. Fall into ranks with your shields ready. Prepare to march into battle. Harness the horses to the chariots. Mount your horses. Put on your helmets and take your positions. Sharpen your spears. Put on your armor. What do I see, says the Lord? The soldiers are terrified. They are retreating. They have been defeated. They are overcome with terror. They desert quickly without looking back. But even the swiftest cannot get away. Even the strongest cannot escape. There in the north by the Euphrates River they stumble and fall in defeat. Who is this that rises like the Nile, like its streams turbulent at flood stage? Egypt rises like the Nile, like its streams turbulent at flood stage. Egypt says, I will arise and cover the earth. I will destroy cities and the people who inhabit them. Go ahead and charge into battle, you horsemen. Drive furiously, you charioteers. Let the soldiers march out into battle, those from Ethiopia and Libya who carry shields. 
and those from Lydia who are armed with the bow. But that day belongs to the Lord God who rules over all. It is the day when he will pay back his enemies. His sword will devour them until its appetite is satisfied. It will drink their blood until it's full. For the Lord God who rules over all will offer them up as a sacrifice in the land of the north by the Euphrates River. Go up to Gilead and get medicinal ointment, you dear poor people of Egypt. But it will prove useless no matter how much medicine you use. There will be no healing for you. The nations will hear of your devastating defeat. Your cries of distress will echo throughout the earth. In the panic of their flight, one soldier will trip over another, and both of them will fall down defeated. The Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah about Nebuchadnezzar coming to attack the land of Egypt. Make an announcement throughout Egypt. Proclaim it in Migdal, Memphis, and Toppenes. Take your positions and prepare to do battle. For the enemy army is destroying all the nations around you. Why will your soldiers be defeated? They will not stand because I, the Lord, will thrust them down. I will make many stumble. They will fall over one another in their hurry to flee. They will say, get up. Let's go back to our own people. Let's go back to our homelands because the enemy is coming to destroy us. There at home, they will say, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is just a big noise. He has let the most opportune moment pass by. I, the king, whose name is the Lord, who rules over all, swear this. I swear as surely as I live that a conqueror is coming. He will be as imposing as Mount Tabor is among the mountains, as Mount Carmel is against the backdrop of the sea. Pack your bags for exile, you inhabitants of poor dear Egypt. For Memphis will be laid waste, it will lie in ruins and be uninhabited. Egypt is like a beautiful young cow, but northern armies will attack her like swarms of stinging flies. Even her mercenaries will prove to be like pampered, well-fed calves, for they too will turn and run away. They will not stand their ground when the time for them to be destroyed comes, the time for them to be punished." Egypt will run away hissing like a snake. As the enemy comes marching up in force, they will come against her with axes, as if they were woodsmen chopping down trees. The population of Egypt is like a vast impenetrable forest, but I, the Lord, affirm that the enemy will cut them down. For those who chop them down will be more numerous than locust. They will be too numerous to count. Poor dear Egypt will be put to shame. She will be handed over to the people from the north. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I will punish Ammon, the god of Thebes. I will punish Egypt, its gods and its kings. I will punish Pharaoh and all who trust in him. I will hand them over to Nebuchadnezzar and his troops who want to kill them. But later on, people will live in Egypt again as they did in former times. I, the Lord, affirm it. You descendants of Jacob, my servants, do not be afraid. Do not be terrified, people of Israel. For I will rescue you and your descendants from the faraway lands where you are captives. The descendants of Jacob will return to their land and enjoy peace. They will be secure and no one will terrify them. I, the Lord, tell you not to be afraid. You descendants of Jacob, my servant for I am with you. Though I completely destroy all the nations where I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will indeed discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not allow you to go entirely unpunished. God, I keep trying to imagine what these people's lives look like, felt like at this time. You know, sometimes the Bible seems so distant from us, and so I always try and put it in perspective of, of the current world to understand, because they go through the same things we do. They're just a little bit different settings. And I think when Barak is uh, having his conversation with you via Jeremiah, I, I think that speaks volumes, is, is they were so overwhelmed, supposedly as your chosen people, <laughs> 
and they were so overwhelmed. Now, granted, almost all of them were being disobedient. They were worshiping other gods. And I totally get that. Obviously, I'm not questioning that at all. But you said, I'm going to cart most of you off to Babylon. I'm going to let them take you. I'm going to use this this bad nation to cart you off um, so you can be disciplined over there, but you'll still be alive. Kind of like what you said to Barak. Um, for some of you people, you're actually going to stay here because you're poor and you're going to manage stuff right here. And then all of a sudden, these same people want to take off to the other nation, to Egypt. <laughs> and here in the United States, at least, we're not, at least my generation, we're not really very understanding of wartime. I know people in other countries are, but with the exception of the attack from 9-11, and most of us weren't here for Pearl Harbor, we really don't understand uh, war. Not like this with sieges upon um, some place that we were supposed to feel safe. And so I, I got to thinking, what if, what if we were the, in that situation? What if, let's say, the United States was your chosen people? Which, I, holy cow, I know that would never happen. But let's say that they were your chosen people. Um, and, and they decided to be disobedient, which obviously we have been. And you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to cart a bunch of you guys off um, to Russia. Because you're being disobedient, but I'm still going to let you live. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you over to Russia for 70 years. <laughs> Um, and a few of you I'm going to leave here in the United States. Now, the United States has just been at battle for two years, under siege for two years, at war for two years. And again, we don't understand what that feels like, but just listening to some of the comments and Barrick talking and, ab and about how overwhelmed they were, there's got to be a lot of fear there. And so this desire to not want to stay in this case in the United States anymore would lead people to say run off to Mexico or run off to Canada which is exactly what they did um, they left where they were at and they headed off to Egypt um, upper and lower Egypt and it at that time it was run by uh, Pharaoh Hophra who who was a we can't really call him a friend maybe ally to King Zedekiah when King Zedekiah was being overrun by the Babylonians. Um, so already they kind of felt comfortable going over to the nation of Egypt because, <laughs> because Pharaoh Hophra seemed like kind of a nice guy. With all that being said, as I, as I kind of think about us taking off to Canada to feel safer, he heading to Mexico to feel safer, and, and, and family and relatives who are in Russia because they've been taken out... Oh, taken away from us and are all the way in Russia as I think about all of that I think about what you've asked these people to do you've asked them and you've asked us to not live of this world and when we follow politics and when we follow um, party lines and when we follow uh, perceived threats from other countries when we allow them to rule our world and overtake our heart and uh, sidetrack us away from what you've asked us to do then we are being disobedient then they almost become gods to us because they're taking away what you've asked us to do none of these people understood that you reign sovereign over all these things that in any given time if you wanted to you could have stopped all of this um, but it was all part of a, a greater plan that you had. We need to remember that we are here on earth or for some of us in the United States or whatever country people who are listening to the video are from. We're only here for a very, very short amount of time, a very, very small blip on, on your big, huge, long, long timeline. And in that process... We can either be consumed by the world, we can be consumed by fear, and we can be consumed by politics, and we can be consumed by party lines, and we can be consumed by uh, he said, she said, they said. Or we can be obedient to you, God, and we can follow exactly what you've told us in the Bible, which is to love others, to take care of others, and to tell others about you. And if we're obedient in doing those things, in fact, it was kind of odd. I was talking to a friend of mine today. Could you imagine a world where everybody just did that? Where everybody just took care of everybody else and everybody else just loved everybody else? <laughs> I 
I guess there wouldn't really need to be a reason for us to be down here on Earth to figure things out. I don't know. It's kind of silly to even think about it because it will never happen, sadly, but... We are sent down here not to be consumed by the world like these people were. To not be consumed by our fear and not be consumed by the headlines of, of the 5 o'clock news. We are here to be consumed by your love and your grace and your mercy. We're here to share that love and that grace and mercy with other people. We're here to reflect your amazing glory, God. And we really can't do that if everything in our life keeps reflecting what is happening with the people who are heads of state and in charge of various nations across the world. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray for them. And you even say in the Bible that we should. But to be so fully consumed that our lives get out of focus from, from the most important thing, which is you, God. That alone is exactly the reason why you were so angry at them and told them that they wouldn't make it back out of Egypt, that they would be destroyed for leaving where you told them to stay put. God, allow me to grow, whether it's here where, you've ha where you have me or whether it's someplace else, but don't let me get so consumed that I lay down roots having to do with this world. Don't allow my heart to be consumed by the things of the daily news. Of getting caught up in all of the drama that the world creates. Yes, they're important things. And yes, we need to know about them because it is the world we live in. But we shouldn't let it make decisions for our lives. The only one who should be making decisions for our lives is you, God. And our hearts should be following that path that you have set before us. God, allow us to have strength to not be terrified because it does get really scary sometimes what the people in power are doing or not doing. God, I know that you reign sovereign over all of them. You reign sovereign over all the, the wars of the world. You reign sovereign over all of the egos of the world. You reign sovereign over all the politics of the world. I know that your power is so far above all of this pettiness that happens here on earth. But I do need to live here, God. Allow my heart and my mind and my eyes to keep focused on my eternal reward instead of getting caught up in the fear of what is currently happening in our world. Allow me to be obedient to you rather than scattering like the people in the story we read today. In your son's name I pray. Amen.